Hey there, welcome back. This is AWS Developer Day. I am A.M. Grabelny, Dev Advocate for Game Day here at AWS with Farrah Campbell. Amazing, incredible, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. I'm getting some compliments me. now. Yeah. It's not just you. Okay, thank you. I appreciate nobody's, that. Nobody's giving me compliments. Uh, you've given me compliments. I was going to say, I know, give, me, give me some credit here. Of course. Uh, welcome back to the show. We are covering all things developer, all things AWS. We've uh, talked with a, a lot of people all day, but... We're going to talk with Nikhil now. Uh, you want to introduce yourself for the audience, please? Sure. Yeah, my name is Nikhil Devan. I am a product lead on Amazon CloudWatch and our AI Ops initiatives. I'm an engineer by background, and I'm really, really passionate about everything monitoring and observability. Now, fun fact about me, I actually started my journey in uh, cloud monitoring uh, when I was tasked with building out the cloud infrastructure for an energy startup that served the complex needs of drillers, geologists, and executives working across three continents. Uh, I made my fair share of mistakes on observability and monitoring, and which is why I wanted to get better at it. Uh, and uh, my journey here in AWS actually started about seven years ago, right here on Amazon CloudWatch. Nice. And I'm still here because I'm really passionate about what the kind of things we're doing. Now, when we talk developers, Nikhil, we can get tunnel vision and uh, you know, I think uh, what is it? Our 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 eye movement only works when there's motion, like a T Rex, right? Like, you know what I'm talking about, Sarah? <laughs> what? Like when a T Rex, you know, looks at something and only can tell when it's moving. Uh, we might get tunnel vision when it comes <laughs> oh, to developers. Yeah. Uh, and only think about the code, but the code's got to run somewhere, right, Absolutely. Nikhil? So we're going to be talking about ops in this segment uh, mm -hmm. and ops around CloudWatch and where all of these uh, AI innovations can help you as a uh, potential DevOps or ops practitioner who is on call and paged, yep. I believe. We're going to simulate a real-life page right yep. now. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so set the clock to 2 a.m. because that's the only time <laughs> you'll get paged, right? Yeah. Or on, uh, on a, or on a holiday, like or, Thanksgiving. Okay, that's exactly. right. <laughs> yeah. So uh, do you want to pull up your screen and, and talk through the scenario that we're in right now? Sure, sure. Okay. So just a super quick background, right? A uh, lot of you are likely familiar with Amazon CloudWatch. It's the native monitoring and observability solution uh, that, that basically is the home of your metrics, your logs, your traces uh, from your AWS services, uh, as well as applications that run on them, right? So today I'm going to like walk you through some of the advancements we have made in the space of AI that help you like get to the get to the root cause or help you with your operational troubleshooting faster. So maybe let's just start with a quick show of hands, right? And you you both can tell me this too. But like, how many of you have been paged in the middle of the night to deal with these kind of operational issues? I certainly have. Yes, I I got paged when I uh, worked on the Amplify team. Actually, when we were talking earlier with Ali. Uh, yes, I've been. It's a lot of fun. Farah, I have not been paged. Okay, good. But I have had burnt turkeys because my brother-in-law has been paged multiple times. Um, so. got, got, got it. But no, look, that that is definitely typical in the day of the life of a developer or someone who's operating that application. So for today, I'm actually going to take off my product hat and wear the hat of a, of a junior developer on an application uh, on a team that is kind of managing and maintaining and uh, uh, serving pet clinics, if you will. Right, so and I'm fairly new to the team and to the job, and, and I'm by no means an expert in all the components of my application. So now that I've been paged, I'm a little bit worried, and the first thing I do is I actually log into CloudWatch to see what's exactly happening. So as you can see, I'm on the CloudWatch console out here, and what I can see is that I can see the availability of my book visit service, which is really the service which is used by our customers to book visits for their pets, has dropped. And uh, it's a pretty significant drop. The availability has gone down from about 100 down to 20. And this isn't good because this basically means my customers can't book their visits. Uh, they're frustrated. Uh, and my business can't make money if the visits aren't coming in. And the additional thing is like we are a multi-tenant service. So I really need to get this system back into a stable state because one customer can actually impact the, the experience of all my customers. So I go in here, uh, and like typically when this happens, I'm I'm scrambling. I'm like looking at metrics. I'm looking at, I'm looking across my my application state to find out what else may be really going wrong. Yeah, as as a junior uh, engineer on this on this team now, let's say you know, do you necessarily know what this alarm is about? 
No, right. not always. And that's the point. Like in this specific case, like the description of the alarm book visit. So I know it's about a service <laughs> that is booking visits. So I know that much, but I don't know much else. I don't right. know where else I should be going to look. Fortunately, in this case, I actually have a new teammate helping me. Uh -huh. The teammate's name is Amazon Q Developer Operational mm -hmm. Investigations. So what I can actually do out here is I can click on the investigate button and say, start new investigation. And it pulls up basically, I'll, I'll give it an investigation title. I can put in some notes about what I know already so far. And you can see it's actually already got a snapshot of the specific signal from which I've started my investigation. And I start the investigation. Now, what I've actually shown you here is one specific workflow of how to come in. But we want to meet you where you are. So just a few other entry points to start this investigation journey. One is that we've actually embedded these dashboards, these CloudWord dashboards across 80 plus AWS service consoles. So the same investigate button is actually available pretty, it's pretty omnipresent across the AWS console now. Couple of other things, um, we also have the ability for you to set like a uh, uh, auto trigger an investigation. So if you will, if you know that there's a critical metric or a critical alarm, which is production critical, and if it if, if you have, if, if that goes into alarm state, you want Amazon Q to automatically start investigating, you can actually do that. So as an example out here, you can look, I'm showing you the history of the alarm, but it says that the alarm went from okay to in alarm and it actually shows you that an investigation was auto triggered. So why this is great is that oftentimes by the time I'm like, I get out of bed, get, get onto my <laughs> laptop, turn open and figure out what's happening, Amazon Q has already done the work to start showing you some signals, right? So, uh, and, and finally, look, uh, with with uh, with the Q chat experience as well, you can just simply start by asking which of my alarms are in a, are firing or in an alarm state, and it'll st start through the workflow and guide you to creating an investigation. I love this friend that's like getting you, helping you get absolutely. started. You know, while you're trying to wake up, get some coffee. It's absolutely so. It's basically like a pair operator. So now let's actually jump into the investigation experience. So think of this view that I'm showing you. It's it's under the investigation tab in CloudWatch, but it's kind of like what I like to believe is my investigation notebook. So on the left-hand side is the feed, so you can see the signal from which I started the investigation, but I can also add notes about what I'm finding out, and as well as as the investigation proceeds. Like, this is meant to be your source of truth, the source of record. Um, and on the right-hand side is where you can see the power of Amazon Q coming through. So what Amazon Q is doing, and it's really learning about your application architecture, looking at all the parts of your application topology, and then making suggestions. So I'll quickly walk you through the two different types of suggestions that we have. So suggestion number one is really called observation. So think of these really as related signals. So typically when you have a metric or an alarm firing, it's not in isolation. There are probably a hundred different things that are going wrong in the system, which are in an anomalous state, which as I mentioned earlier, I was typically having to go find myself because I need to know the application architecture myself. In this specific case, Amazon Q actually does that on your behalf. I would imagine the observations, and please tell me if I'm I'm right or wrong here, uh, the observations are just like, these are the alarms. They're not trying to determine any root cause. They're just showing you what's going on. These are the metrics that are, are uh, you know, signaling that something's going wrong. Exactly. So it's 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 related metrics, which are an anomalous state. It's, uh, it's anomalies in logs and log patterns that we have identified. It's also looking at like CloudTrail events as such. So it's not just looking at data, which is lying in CloudWatch. It's looking at CloudTrail. It's looking at AWS health events. Right. So it's looking pretty holistically across your AWS estate to like point out related things that are happening. And would you, would you, oh, sorry. Go I ahead. was just going to say like, how does Q come up with this? Uh, well, so uh, look at uh, a lot of it uh, starts from the fact that we, 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 we we know your application topology. So if you're already using, as you, as you, and we can share some of these details in the uh, in the chat. But uh, we like if you are already using uh, AWS X Ray or the application signals or the APM experience within CloudWatch, you've already given us context into how your application topology is structured. Now, if you want, that's fine too because we actually try and infer your topology. At AWS, we have a good understanding of which services talk to each other, how APIs interact and so on. So we can actually infer the topology as well based on the interaction patterns between these services and these APIs. So it's really using that underlying tech in order to kind of come up with suggestions. Um, and maybe, maybe this is a good segue into the second type of suggestions, which is a hypothesis. So this is really when you have, when we've collected enough observations and analyzed them, correlated them, looked at the context between these observations, we actually put together and suggest to you what are potential root causes that could actually be happening out here. So let's just, let's just walk through one of them, right? So this is the hypothesis that Q has suggested. So it's saying that the pet clinic front-end service has experienced 
a drop in availability. Cool. I knew that because I saw it from the alarm. Uh, there was a chain reaction starting from DynamoDB throttling events on the visit registration table. Okay, so now I'm starting to get it. The front end is backed by a visit service, which is writing to a DynamoDB table. And there's been a sudden traffic spike from a specific customer. So it's not only telling you that there's throttling happening on the DynamoDB table, it's actually telling you which customer that's coming from. So there's more information and it starts telling you what are now the next steps you can actually be looking at. So when we have surfaced this potential root cause to you, it's really up to you to decide, does this make sense? Does it not? Do you want to accept it? Do you want to discard it? Uh, and so on. Can I ask, Nikhil, so mm -hmm. uh, in terms of like an ops person utilizing this tool, let's, so the scenario you've given us today is I'm a junior ops person on the team. I don't, I'm not as familiar with the uh, application architecture as I, you know, somebody more senior might be. So I'm probably going to try and gravitate towards this hypothesis mm -hmm. is what I would think, because that's going to give me uh, some things to work from. But if I'm a seasoned person on the team, uh, I could still, even if I'm not using this hypothesis uh, feature, I could still derive a lot of value out of that observation side of because course. I know where all the app architecture is, but generally I have to go collect from all these disparate sources, like you mentioned, CloudTrail, you know, CloudWatch. Uh, but I can find that all in the observation. Exactly, exactly. And look, the best part is if you're one of those seasoned operators, and if let's say we are surfacing you 10 observations, but you know, that these two are more relevant to this right. issue because I know my estate well, you can actually accept those suggestions specifically and discard the rest. And then the assistant will actually say, okay, I've learned from the user. I'm taking signals from them. Interesting. And actually it'll frame a different hypothesis because now it's now it has, now the operator has actually pointed it in the right direction and said, I, I'm not as interested in this service having an anomaly. I think this might be a red herring. It's actually this. Right. Go look in this direction. So actually, it's a continuous learning and feedback loop process where once the operator actually accepts or discards, it actually feeds it into the system and the assistant goes and runs its analysis again. That's really interesting. So yeah, if you know your system you know, throws up errors regularly on this service, you know, you can, you can just... Uh, do that through the observation side, and that will then impact the hypothesis. That's Absolutely. really cool. Absolutely. And look, one of the really cool things about this is as we were walking through, like as we were working backwards at Amazon on how to build this product, one of the things that our customers told us is, it's great. We want you to tell us what are the potential root causes, but it's still early days in the whole AI ops space. Uh, so we really want to like build that, build and earn that trust with the customer. So one of the things we actually do out here is we actually have the show reasoning button. So for every hypothesis we generate, you can actually, we actually tell you, like, how did we come up with this conclusion? So I'll quickly walk you through this, right? So I've told you what the hypothesis says, but here it actually tells you what were the signals it actually looked at to come up with this conclusion. So out here, you can see DynamoDB, right throttling events were happening on the visit registration table. Uh, you can see a contributor insights observation, which is showing that there's a spike from this one customer. So that's how it actually pinpointed that it's one customer. Now, one of the things that a lot of customers actually told us is they used this product and they were like, we didn't know that contributor insights existed. And this is the beauty of it. You don't actually have to know each and every feature that is in the tool because we're using all of these tools under the hood to provide you these capabilities. So just as an example, contributor insight tells you about the top talker. So whenever there's an impact, it tells you which are the top customers impacting uh, that specific issue. But now you know, so you can go and start, like it almost in a way is also teaching you how to use some of our tools and products as well. Um, you also have, like I said, additional signals, like if your uh, application signals is effectively our application performance monitoring tool. And we have some golden metrics that we collect out of the box if you're, use, if you're building on Kubernetes and other environments. So like false, latency errors, you can see they're all spiking at the same time. So this is how it kind of concluded that look, it's a DynamoDB throttling. It's this specific customer. It correlated it with the the the, the visit service, and it's coming to that conclusion. So, Nikhil, let's go back to the hypothesis, mm -hmm. if you don't mind. Yep. And I know you say uh, you said earlier it's got a possible next step. Uh, you know, as as an ops practitioner, you're likely at 2 a.m. going to be looking for an immediate resolution, <laughs> right? Uh, to uh, immediate remediation, and mm -hmm. then like you deal with the long-term remediation uh, when you are more <laughs> cognizant and aware of what you're doing instead of 2 a.m. So uh, can we walk through some of these possible next steps yeah. and, and kind of evaluate them through the lens of 
of a real ops engineer who Absolutely. might get these. Absolutely. So let's let's walk through the four which are listed out here, right? So it says number one, analyze the widget registration stable capacity utilization and the throttling metrics to confirm the extent of the issue. So it's basically saying like you can go look at it in the show reasoning, but you could be looking at more. Go look at all the metrics of the specific table to see what's happening. Second Go and actually investigate why this customer, 999, is actually sending that much traffic to this DynamoDB tip. That probably <laughs> needs me to call the clinic in the morning and say, what's happening? That sounds like right. long term, right? Like exactly. I would bucket that into exactly. the long term. So side. that's not something I can do right now. So how am I going to like fix the issue now so that I can go back to sleep? So I look at the third one and it actually says I can temporarily increase the provision capacity for my table to alleviate image throttling issues. It also says I could optimize my auto scaling to better handle sudden traffic spikes. But again, that's in the future, more right. long term. So in this specific case, I'm like, that's exactly what I want to do. I like this. I've looked at the reasoning. I agree with the reasoning. And I can accept this. I can also look at the actions that it is suggesting. So this is awesome. This is where like AWS has like 500 plus managed runbooks where when we know specific common issues our customers are seeing, we have a managed runbook for it. So out here, it's actually showing you two of the runbooks around auto scaling, around modifying the provision capacity. Oh, nice. And it also like gives you like other documentation. So if you just want to learn more about, let's say, throttling issues on DynamoDB, it also has links to that. So it's putting all of this together in one place for you to decide what the next steps are. And what what security controls are in place for like accessing all this data? Right. So like when uh, and again, this is a link we can share in the chat. But we do have like a getting started workflow where you can basically set up like uh, who has access to the data, what permissions you are giving it. Can it go look across accounts? Can it go look in a very specific area? So we are we are setting up all of these permissions mm -hmm. uh, so that like the assistant as well as your operators only have access to what they need to have access to. Um, so again, in this specific case, it's it's by this time it's probably two or five, and I'm like I'm, I'm <laughs> here, the run book. and I'm like I want to do the runbook. So it tells me a little bit more about the runbook. It tells me what the runbook does. It tells me like what input parameters are actually needed. Out here, it's already told me what table I'm talking about, and I can actually go just increase my read and write capacity units, save it, and execute the runbook. So essentially, what I've done out here is like very quickly I've managed to go from I'm paged on an alarm come to CloudWatch, I'm able to quickly find out like what is the potential root cause, which in this specific case was that my front end had an issue because the, the, the visit service backing it was getting backed up. That was because the DynamoDB table talking to it was getting throttled. And that was actually because there was a specific customer who was creating a spike. And all of this was done in the matter of a few minutes. And a lot of our customers have told us that these workflows would typically take them hours. And now it's down to a few minutes. So it's really, really powerful. And it's again, it's meant to be a pair operator. It's meant to help you in your troubleshooting journey. You're still fully in control. You don't take any actions on your behalf. You maintain full control to understand what the assistant is suggesting, guiding us in the right direction, as we talked about earlier, and then actually being able to run a runbook and taking next steps from there. We've got about a minute left to harness that power. Mm -hmm. What do I need to do? To okay. get started. It's actually really simple. So uh, you 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 can come into CloudWatch. Uh, there's a in the investigation tab out here. You basically set up what is known as an investigation group. Uh, you're basically able to. Here is where we talked about the permission. So you basically set up the permission of what the assistant has access to, uh, and 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 we do have some best practices. So like I mentioned earlier, the more we know about your application topology, the better this experience is going to be. So we enable you like we have like one-click experiences from here, which enable you to turn on X-ray application signals, get your CloudTrail logs into CloudWatch. So really, all of those permissioning is done out here. And that's as simple as that. You can get started, and once you have it, you can start investigating any problem you have. I love it. That's great. Go, 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 get go set up. Yeah, go investigate. <laughs> get it, get it set up. Follow that, uh, and start harnessing the power for I, your investigation. I love yeah. power. <laughs> I know you do, Farah. <laughs> Nikhil, thank you for joining us.